Hmm. Hello. Good evening. Welcome to Strength and Swings. My name is Lauren. And I'm Ian. And we'll be continuing working on our kettlebell skills and progressing through some more single arm swings with a slightly higher rep structure this week as we've been building towards that. Our usual get ups and some cleans and presses to finish things off. I have one bell today for today's, oh, no, I'm gonna actually have two bells for today's workout. So it's a single arm swing bell, something you can do some get ups with and then some cleans and presses at the end. All you'll need right now is your body weight to get started. Ian will take us through a nice warm up here. That's right, we'll start with that body weight. And again, if there's anything throughout today's practice that you have never done with a kettlebell before, groove it with a body weight or a light dumbbell, an exercise ball around, check it out. But we'll start simply with our breath. In a stance comfortable for you, maybe it's that sumo squat or a narrow hand belly, hand chest. A four second breath into that belly. And exhale. Now brace your abs like a punch and breathe into that belly again. And exhale. I heard that from here. We're going to chill out the abs a little bit and breathe into that chest. A four second breath in. 360 around that rib cage, exhale. Embrace those abs again. Breathe into the chest. And exhale. One more time through, take a breath into the belly with loose abs. You can feel that rise and exhale. And now brace as if to take that punch and breathe in underneath of your shield. And exhale. One last time, loosen the abs and a breath into the chest. Exhale. And then with abs tight as in that plank, chest breath in. Exhale. Shake it out. Come on down to the floor on all fours. Wiggle, roll, any way you get there is good by us. Fingertips down first, then the callus line or the first knuckles and then the full hand at the heel. Fingertips, knuckles, heels. From here, extend the neck, look forward. Maybe a silly face in there. And then pull the crown away from the body, tucking the chin, and have a modest neck flexion. Keep pulling down, chin to sternum, but let your face go forward. Support the extension of the neck with the muscles on the front, and then pull the chin towards the sternum, crown away from the hips, flexing the neck. Keep your head in that neutral position and now bring attention to the T-spine. Round the T-spine by pulling the rib cage onto the hips. What's the T-spine? The rib cage, the thoracic spine, your bra line. From there, press the floor away, protracting the shoulder, and then retract the shoulders. Pinch them together. Pinching them together. From there, flex the spine, upper back. Then pull the sternum to the hips, head stays in the same position, and press your T-spine into extension, thinking cow pose from yoga. One more time, retract shoulders, flexing through the rib cage and T-spine, rounding, then pull down that sternum to hips, create the ab brace, and then the extension through the T-spine, pressing forward. Let's press away from the ground into a lunge position to talk to the hips and lumbar spine. In our lunge stance, if we did our posterior tilt, that's that front of hip going to the back, then that might light up your quad. And the anterior tip, excuse me, is where the front of the hips goes away or to the floor in front and your tailbone scoops out the back. Tuck under the hip, posterior tuck, and then anterior the other way. Your lumbar isn't moving too, too much here, but again, use the control of those abs and legs to do it. Switch it out, same thing on the other side. Hips to level, posterior tuck is a butt squeeze on my left leg, or the leg away from the camera for Lauren, and the anterior tip, the front of the hips, spill that punch forward if we use the hip as a punch bowl analogy. Tuck under, Feel the stretch load, tip away, perhaps that hamstring in the back, come back to a tall tuck, 
Bring the leg underneath. And one last time on those hands. Fingertips towards the knees this time. Fingertips down first, then the callus line, and then the whole hand with the heel. Chin tuck as to look right between those hands. And from here, press the index fingers into the ground. Three, two, one, relax. Then press both those middle fingers into the ground. Relax. The middles are next. The rings. Keep, yep, the rings. Hard to keep track sometimes. There are rings. Relax. The pinkies. Relax. The thumbs. And then all of them at once as you bend the elbows this time. And then peel the hand away from the ground. The fingertips are the last to leave with a little bit of a flick. Let's step out into the lunge. Check. Hips to level. Bring that leg towards the side as in our getup. From here, let's just do a hula. What's a hip hula? We're gonna tuck our hips under. I'll go counterclockwise first as my hips or the bowl is going out that way. And then scooping around the back, adducting that femur into the hip, trying to touch Lauren with this part of my hip here and back to center. Might've heard a little crack pop here. Uh, obviously not ideal, but maybe that's just enough to get the grease going. Let's switch our direction. From the front, we'll hula out to the side and then to the back, tucking under the hips in that posterior tuck a little bit just to protect that lumbar spine. My last half revolution here, adjust in the middle, square up, bring the leg underneath, and switch. Hips to level, open a leg to the side. Doesn't have to face at that three o'clock if we're looking straight ahead at midnight. Personalize that to you. From here, let's go clockwise first. So from midnight, I'm gonna tuck my hip under, bring it around the back, feeling the tension through the hips and not the lumbar spine. If we feel the low back, that's that cue to tuck under the hips just that little bit more, bring around to center, and then twice the other direction. Nice and control. Might be an oval, might be a circle, square or diamond. Figure it out, groove it out, return to center and underneath. Come on to the back, we'll do one get up up with those presses in between, warming up our shoulders and checking in with our lunge and pressing ranges of motion. That's an awesome setup. Set up like Lauren right now. We have our firing range position and then we'll press one hand to the ceiling, the other arm extended at the side. Extend the hip, pushing and rolling and pulling to the elbow. On the elbow, we'll pull that elbow towards touching the hip keeping the forearm vertical. Also is the hand, press those pinky knuckles up to the ceiling and then press. Next phase of the get up, the tall sit, retract shoulders, press into the floor and then pull that elbow towards the hip and core brace, press back up. Bridge, sweep the leg and then slowly bring that elbow towards the hip keeping the forearm vertical, super challenging, external rotation of that shoulder, and then press. Press the floor away, square up the lunge. We'll step right up overhead here, <laughs> core tension. Pull down once, pulling down, cueing, and bring strength and awareness to that press groove. <laughs> Back overhead, core brace. Then the leg we can touch, we'll go to the floor. We'll open up the hip, hips, <laughs> rotate, Hinge, find the floor, stack, sweep, elbow pause, one second and come back here. Come to the floor for one second and then back. Now two seconds, one, two, and back. Three seconds, one, two, three, and then last time, four, three, two, to the ground. Two hands, cuddle it, turn with it, and we'll do the same thing on the other side. So in the cuddle position, my left arm will press to the ceiling. My arm will out to the side. And from here, we'll extend the hip, push onto that elbow. Now that we're on the elbow, adjusting if you need, pull that elbow toward the hip. Core brace to tall. Tall sit, same thing. Pull through the armpit. Where are the directions of those pinky knuckles? and press, pretending, imagining we have that kettlebell. I'm gonna let my partner go first through that tall sweep move. Don't bonk heads. Hip bridge, sweep, that external rotation as we pull 
that elbow towards the hip, lat cramp perhaps, press. From there, press away, square up the lunge, hips are level, what's up? Pull that down now that we're at the top. Pull down, use that armpit tension to groove the press. Let's press back up to tall. And then the leg you can touch drops down. We'll open up, hinge, hand finds floor, stack over top. Tall sit. And then, again, little modification here from the elbow, one second, and then to the stack position. Two seconds, and then return. Three, core brace. Yep. And then four seconds, ending up on the floor. Two, one. There we go. There's no rules now. Come on up. Anyhow, that works for you. Shake it out. Roll up. Single leg squat up. I'm going to hand it over to Lauren. Excellent. We've been starting our strength and swing classes this semester with some squats and then walking out to our plank and push-up variations. We're going to continue that today. From your squat stance, let's pull ourselves low. Feel the adductors as you pull the floor together underneath you and then start dropping to your low squat position. In your safe low position, your heels are on the floor. Your spine is nice and extended, lifted up. Maybe rock back and forth here a couple times in this first one today. From here, we're going to walk ourselves out into a plank and hold a high tension plank like the top of your swing for 10 seconds. You're going to have to tip forward a little bit. Walk yourself out or walk your feet back, whatever works for you in your space. Drop your hips, connecting ribs to hips. Squeeze your butt and start pulling the floor together underneath you for 10 seconds. Here at the top of your swing, you have that shield on that Ian talked about earlier with those abs brace and you're breathing underneath them for four, three, two. Now press the floor forward to push your hips back. Adjust your feet stance back to your low squat. Extended spine. Drive down and out on the floor to stand up tall. Shake it up. You'll need a bell now that we're going to warm up some stop swings and some stop cleans with. So grab your bell, bring it out in space. And our first drill here is going to be three rounds of single arm stop swings. What that'll look like is we'll set up behind our bell here. We'll hinge, grip, pack shoulder, pull to zipper, one full swing, through, and park. Three times each side. Standing behind your bell, hip hinge, grip with one hand, pack that shoulder, big pull, swing through, and park. Two more. Top of your swing, you're in that plank. Last one, and park. Stand up without, shake it out. Ooh, the shield. The shield. Same thing, second side, imagining that plank at the top. Hinge, grip, pack, pull. Strong exhale as those hips drive through. Off arm coming with you, and both hips. And park. Let it go, hmm. shake it out. Couple nose breaths to get that breath back. And then we'll come back down to our squat position. In your squat stance, pull yourself low. This time let's work on some external rotation. So that hip will open up, that knee will pry away. My instep is gonna pull a little bit away from the floor, but I'm not rolling over on my ankle. Back to center. Grip with the floor, feel that arch, external rotate. One more time each side. This time when we walk out to our plank, we're gonna walk out and try a three point plank. So walk your hands out to your plank position, high plank. You might want your feet in about your swing distance apart. Not really wide though, that's cheating. Now squeeze your butt, brace your abs and breathe. And think about transferring weight to one hand, removing the other hand towards your chest and keeping your hips square to the floor for three, two, Place the hand down, switch sides. If I put that bowl of water on your back, it might ripple because you're quivering, but it's not gonna spill. Two hands down, press forward to come back to your low squat. Chest lifts, heels down, up without. Nice. Hmm. That single arm swing, or single arm plank, is representative of what we should feel at the top of that single arm swing. So think about that brace as you're up there. In this set though, 
we're going to progress from our single arm swing, stop swings, to our single arm, stop cleans. It'll look like this. We've been perfecting our cleans over the past week. Pull through, zip clean, through, and park. We'll do three on each side again. Modifications include standing over top of your kettlebell and working on that dead stop Cheat version. Pain. With two hands. Yes, progress how you need to. Hopefully you're ready for this because you've been with us the past couple weeks. One hand grips, tip your bell, pull, clean to rack, through, and park. Repeat two more times. As you're doing this, thinking that you're in a telephone booth and you don't want to hit those beautiful plexiglass doors, <laughs> park. I used to smell so bad. Shake it out, same thing, second side. Hip hinge, grip, pack, pull, zip. zip. Both hips coming through. Feel that plank position at the top. Zip. And park. Last one. Packing lat. Through and park. Nice. Up without. Those load up the body. Mm -hmm. One more. Walk out to our squat and in a plank position. This time we'll assume our high plank position. We'll go to a halfway push-up position and then hang out at the bottom. All you need to know right now is we're coming down to our squat. In our squat, we worked on our external rotation. Now let's work on some internal rotation. You're gonna pull or think about bringing one knee towards the midline. The foot is allowed to roll here, but our hips open back up other side. Our hips aren't twisting. We're not rotating with this. We're staying square. One more time each side and center, and last time, and center. Now from here, walk yourself out to your high plank or high push-up position. Hold tension up here, go, five. Lats and glades, gauge, glutes, squeeze. Three, two, find halfway down your push-up, hold. Five, three, two, and all the way at the bottom, hold. Three, two, press the floor away. Push yourself back to your low squat. Chest is lifted. Hop, hop, shake it out. We have one more stop drill. And that's gonna be a one-handed swing to a clean, to a park. I'll show you. Move it. Mm -hmm. One swing, one clean, through, and park. Repeat, swing, clean, park. Let's go for three on each side if we could. If you have any questions, let's use that chat feature. No, nothing today, but that's okay. Any refining tips, let us know. Any questions, just ask. Let's set up in our single arm swing. One hand grips, pack, swing first, pull, swing. Through, clean, through, park. Pack shoulder, re-grip, swing, clean, Park. Last one. Swing. Clean. Park. Stand up, shake it off. Nice. In that clean, you might notice you have a slightly lighter grip than say when you're doing your single arm swing, and that's good. That light grip to punch through to the ceiling to end up in that rack position. Same thing, second side. Hip hinge, grip bell. Pack, swing first, clean, <coughs> and park. Same thing, pull, swing, and clean, and park. Last one, pull, swing, and clean, and through park. Hmm. Nice, stand up, shake it off. So the past couple of weeks we've been progressing our swing, single arm swing reps, last week we did fives, sixes, sevens, and then six and fives again. This week, we're going to go, I go, you go, mm -mm. five single arm swings, five single arm swings, five single arm swings, five single arm swings, then sixes, then sevens, then eights, then nines, and then tens. Oh. That's six rounds of single arm swings. You either choose to go with me 
or you choose to pattern with Ian, don't go with both of us because you'll do way too many swings. I'm gonna start with my right hand doing five single arm swings and then Ian will go and then I'll do my left, Ian will go. We're doing five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If you feel like that's too many for you, five, six, seven, six, five. Five, 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 five. Six, 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 six. Pick the numbers that work for you. This can also be done with two-handed swings, very appropriate. I'm going first, Team Lauren. First hand, five single arm swings. Here we go. Lauren starts strong, finishes stronger with that breath match for five hard style kettlebell swings. She'll park it, and that's our cue to pick it up. So now Team Ian is going on that first arm for five and keeping just as ballistic number one as number five. When he parks it, we're up, second hand, five swings. Pull. Get the hairs out of your face but get those abs tight throughout. Brace those abdominals always, but especially right at the top. Missed my cue, but I'll go here. Ian's team, round two of set one. We're getting up next to six swings. If you're into that, join me for six, or pick the number that suits you. Hinge, grip, six. The feet are rooted heavy in the floor, and that plank tension you warmed up with at the top. Lauren prepared us with that three-point position, anti-rotation in your one-arm swings. Take a couple breaths in and out through the nose there. Trying to slow it down. Remembering as you do these as well, send both hips through, both hips. Hinge, second side, six. Slowing down the breath. That's where it gets quiet in our own practice here. Feel the breath, feel the power. Second side of six. Two rounds down. I'm getting up to number seven here. You pick your number that works for you. Keeping it strong the whole time. Ooh. All right, Team Lauren, second side, seven swings. A little bit of a stumble there on the finish. Root those feet throughout the whole movement. When the bell returns to the ground, and then you're done. Start strong. Finish stronger, maintain that good form. Team An in. extra second rest. Round Seven. three, round three. Seven swings. Breathing. Trying to match your breath to that hip drive through, that strong exhale. As your hips drive through, team more in second side, mm. seven. Seven reps, keeping that shoulder blade retracted and an awesome straight elbow there as Lauren's showing at the top. Full hip extension, hit that number, park, and rest. Nice. Eight, nine, and 10 left, so we're halfway here. Round four, eight swings each side. Again, if you've peaked at seven, no problem. Six, five, mm. your number. Eight, here we go. To build that strength and endurance, we like climbing up that ladder a little bit, waving your number from five to seven to five. Amazing. It makes five feel easy. It makes seven feel approachable. Take your time. Taking those breaths like we did at the beginning. Everything we do leading up to these swings is to prepare us for them. Our breath, our shield, our single arm planks, Ready, Team Lauren? Eight second mm. arm. Oh my goodness. Slowing down the breath. Not an easy task, but it does help with that recovery and reinforces yourself to your body. It's okay. We can handle this stress. Team Ian, finishing up your sevens here. If you're feeling good, next round we're going up to eights. I know. The rounds get longer. I thought it started going 10 down, but whew, save that. Team Lauren, eight. Those eight reps. Lauren said we're over that hill set, but it was only in talk to those sets of reps. Lots of reps coming. Let's finish strong. Oh, and shake it out. Eight. Shaking out that grip and hands in between. Again, keep that ballistic nature of your swings. 
If you're noticing you start to lose that, decrease your reps. See me in finishing up this set. That's eight. Here we go, second side eight. Hmm. As Lauren said, that grip might start, start to fatigue. Perhaps in a separate workout, work on those grip holds to build up the endurance. And I'm enjoying that rest. You can do a couple more if you want. Go ahead. Team Ian. Last First side eight. eight, I'm sorry. Last, second set of eight. Second set of eight here. Team Ian. Nines and tens left. No problem. One set at a time. Slow down that breath. Here we go. Nine swings, hinge grip. That breath match. Breathe in as that kettlebell is coming towards the back and the hip hike. And then that tension when we're in that plank at the top. Let the kettlebell float and get Ooh, it down and go again. Almost in 10. Nine there. Team in. Nine swings. Even though you're getting tired, keep the form. Top notch. Tight the zipper. Still delay that hinge back. Play your chicken game. Don't lose your hinge. Keep oh. the butts driving back. Number nine, second, second side. Second side. Hmm. Yeah, get me working like this and then I'll be quiet a little bit. Enjoy that rest. Stay loose between sets. And again. Team Ian, finishing up nines. Team Lauren, and soon to be Team Ian. We have one more set each. 10 and 10. Biggest set yet. Be honest with yourself. If it shouldn't be 10, no Ooh. worries. Nobody's watching you but you. Mm. Hinge. Adding grip. those safe progressions in your workout. Five. Climb that ladder slowly and come back down whenever you want. Skip some numbers. Keep track at home in your journal. What did you do last week? And this week, just try to add one. That adds up over time. Whew. Shake it out. Ten. Ten, Damien. Finishing up my last set of swings today. I can promise you that much. Slowing down your breath. Big ins and outs. You're chill. You're in control. One more set of ten here. Whew. Finish it out. Hinge. Sometimes it feels like you're in Rip. control. And other times it feels like Lauren is, and that's okay too. Regulate your own efforts. Keep up with our amazing instructor. And a couple more reps, and you're safely done. <sighs> Unless you're with me. Then you have one more half set to go. All right, team Ian, finish it out. Ten swings here. Just as strong as swing number one. Team Lauren, you're chilling. Shaking out the grip. Trying to slow down your breath. Trying to keep your mouth closed. Breathing in and out of your nose. Maybe you're grabbing a quick sip. Also appropriate. Hmm. We'll give Team Ian a little bit of time to slow down. If you're wondering what you're breathing out of more or into more, place that hand on the chest and hand on the belly. And for the next 20 or so seconds, just try to focus on making your belly big on your inhale. And exhale, it goes smaller. Inhale, it expands. Exhale, it goes smaller. For about three more. Yes, my chest is moving, but I'm trying to open and close through that diaphragm or that mid body versus up down there. Mm. Whew. Nice. I'm going to just wet my whistle here with a quick sip. Whew. And then we're going to do what we did last week. If you recall, he might not. That's also appropriate too. We took a bell, started on the floor. We did two get ups on each side in a row. So, like Ian said, there, maybe you journal and you wrote last week, I did one all the way up down with my load, and then I was tired, and I did one body weight. Great. Maybe try to do 1.5 this time with your load, finish body weight. You know it. Perhaps grab the lighter load, right? Whatever load you need. Make it up. We're going to start on the floor. Two get-ups in a row on the same side. 
if, again, another modification could be, I just feel like doing my four get-ups, right, left, right, left. Also very appropriate. I'm going to start on my left side because I try to start on my left side sometimes. And I'm going to do two up and two down on my left. Cuddle. Breath. Roll press. <clears throat> Hip drive. Pull elbow. Find that tall sit. You work through this get up at your own pace, but it really shouldn't be too much faster than what we're doing here. As we come back down towards the floor, starting to look back at that bell, control to your back and keep that bell in the firing range position as we go back up for number two on this side. Using both legs through that lunge. Stacking the shoulders, sweeping, and finishing with control to your backside. Pull the bell down. Take a couple seconds. How'd that go? How'd that go? Oh, I kind of forgot we were going to do two in a row. Oh. So when Lauren said stay in that firing range, you're like, uh-oh. What did I forget? Uh-oh. Well, mentally prepare. This side, second side, two in a row again. Um, okay. We okay? Um, kind of. <laughs> I can move. Okay, got it. Okay, cuddle, sorry. Cuddle, roll, press. Yeah. Yeah. Second side here. Looking at that bell until you're in that windmill or lunge position, then you're looking forward, standing up tall, and controlling every step. In that firing range, keep it there, and work back through your second one. Staying underneath that load, keeping your wrists nice and straight and strong and stacked. Rotating around that bell and controlling to the ground. Finishing strong. Take your time. You okay? Oh yeah. Coming to standing. This Ooh. is where I'm gonna switch out my bell. It's a little heavy for me to do our next activity, which we finished with last week. We did, it's actually on that side. I used the eight. Sorry, sorry, prop manager. We did some cleans and presses last week to finish up for this. So for three minutes, you're gonna get your bell. One clean, zip, one press, park. That's round one. Hi. Oh, hey, thanks for that. No. On the next 30 seconds, second arm does the same thing. Minute number two. Maybe you go for two, that what two would look like is clean press, clean press, second arm. Every 30 seconds you're doing something, you pick your rep structure, that's what I was thinking about there. Last week I did one, two, three. I'm gonna try to go two, three, maybe four. We'll see, what are you doing? One, two, three. Ian's doing one, two, threes. So with your bell out front, on the 30 seconds, which will go in five seconds, a clean and a press, your reps. Ready? Here we go. So a clean, zip, a press. And like I said, I'm trying for two this time, so I'm going another clean and another press. And through. I don't know if you heard in the cheap seats in the back here, that was a little bit That's what excessive. I, I might scale my reps ones and ones here today. Right. You're using the same bell. I came down a load. So mine was like, whoa, so light. Ready? Second arm, same reps. Clean. Press. And one more time. A clean. And a press. And a park. And Not a to be a narcissist, but I was watching myself the other day on some film. And this hand was really <laughs> weird and soft at the side. What I love about Lauren's presses, she coaches it all the time. Tension, full body tension, that plank, and make it fist. Get ready. First arm again, pick your reps, clean press. 
Still keep that exhale as you come through your press. And whether you're adding a rep, keeping the same, strong no matter what it is. And park. Hmm. That help, Lauren. Hmm? That full body tension mm. help. Yeah, don't forget about the butt squeeze. Okay. And the ab brace to send that bell overhead. Second side, same reps. Hinge, go. Clean. Zip. Press. Yep. Repeat. Or keep it at one. Both hips are still coming through on that clean. And park. Ooh. We said we were doing three rounds of this. So we have one more round left. Pick your number. And on strength, not failure. So Lauren, I said I needed to do three at the end. But my number's right now just one. Because I need to hold what Lauren just said there. It's okay if you don't hit your reps you wanted to at the beginning of the practice. That's smart training. You're listening to what your body can say you can or maybe shouldn't do for today. As Lauren said, finish with strength. Maintain that integrity. Shake it out in between. That was really nice work, by the way. Thank you. One more set. Last reps of today's class. Keep it clean, so to speak, and tidy. Don't get sloppy towards the end. Pressing down through those feet to press that kettlebell up and tense the brace firm in the middle with the bum squeeze and that shield mm. as abs. Mm. Now, what would a strength and swings class be without a very difficult oh. breath to finish up and one stretch after that? Close your mouth, breathe in and out your nose. Inhale into belly. Here we go now for four. Exhale belly for four. Inhale belly for four. Hold. Inhale to chest for four. Exhale for four. One more round. Into belly for four. Hold for four. Into chest for four. Exhale for four. This is the hardest part. Hold empty for four. Ew. Oh, I'm relaxed. I don't know if you heard me. I did it. I snuck an inhale quickly before I held. Mm. I had a thumbs up after last class for the stretch we finished up with, so I'd like to do that again today really quickly, and then we'll be done. Come on down to the floor to your knees. We're going to hinge on our hips, pushing them back. Hands find the floor. Take a single leg. hi -ya, kick it out to the side. If the floor is too far away from you and you're in something that looks like this, oh, and a cat, I want you to get something in front of you to put your hands up on and keep that tailbone nice and long. Perhaps a heavy kettlebell. Heavy kettlebell, ottoman, Chesterfield. Chesterfield. Anyway, <laughs> foot is flat on the floor right now. Explore that ankle mobility. Now, Rotate in so just the instep of the foot is on the floor. Check in with your tailbone. It should be tilted slightly reaching towards the ceiling. Still a core brace, not a dump in the low back. Now on your heel, gently keep the heel down, but externally rotate or show your inseam towards the front of the room. And now from here, turn the foot. The whole leg is supposed to internally rotate here. The foot will connect with the floor again. Now can we try some internal rotation? So gently lifting the heel and turning the inseam behind you. And then heel goes back down. Externally rotate again, inseam forward. As we do this next one and come down, putting our uh, instep down and then gently lifting the heel. I don't want you to get crampy or crunchy in that side or low back there. Keep long. Come back to a flat foot on the floor and put the whole foot down. Tilt your tail to the ceiling. Maybe sit back a little bit into that stretch. Keep the spine long, extend the chest forward. Pull yourself through center. Drag the foot in and switch to the other side. Other leg kicks out. Let's just explore our ankle mobility here. So we have that full flat foot on the floor. Tail's long. That's a nice stretch, just rocking back and forth there. Then in steps down, so the outside the foot's off the floor. 
We externally rotate on that heel, trying to get the inseam forward. And then we put the full foot, or sorry, the instep down. The big toe and ball of foot are gonna stay down as maybe we slightly internally rotate on that. And one more time, external rotation, inseam forward. And as you're doing this last one, again, check in that your ankle isn't doing more rotation than what your hip should be. It's hard, I know. Text, email, ask if you have questions about that. Back to the flat foot, tailbone tilts long. Gently sit back a little bit into that. Oh yeah, adductors. Pull the knee under center and let's say our goodbyes. Thank you again for joining us tonight on our Strength and Swings class. I had a great time getting that endurance up on our single arm swings Ooh. and working towards sets of 10. Mm -hmm. I think next week we'll alternate some fives and some tens, work between those. So stay tuned. It's just, I know you can't wait. We've been working on the progressions for that one arm swing since that first week in January. Grab two hands, grab a kettlebell, or just pretend, and perhaps join us either live or archive of tomorrow's beginner body weight class. It Thanks. helps. Oops. It helps. It helps. And Lauren then, helps. I wouldn't do those swings if it wasn't for Lauren, so thank you very much for that. You're welcome. Great. <laughs> Thanks take, for coming tonight. We'll see you soon. Take care. Goodbye. Stay strong and train soon. Bye-bye. Goodbye.